Right, just getting uh, ready to uh, start assembling the gearbox now. Um, we've already got the main bearing in, and the new we've got a new uh, uh, roller needle roller bearing on for the back of the lay shaft, and there's there's one for the other end that we'll put in later on. So that's done. It's all cleaned up inside. Done the threads, cleaned out all the holes made sure there's none of that horrible uh, grip lasting grip about that can sit in the gearbox uh, because it's quite rough casting in there right uh, then i've just gone through and i've just checked all the gears and so on i've been looking for pitting on any of the actual gears there's no pitting at all on any of them no sign of any appreciable wear on the gears i've checked that the uh, fourth gear is spinning freely on the on the lay shaft it's not binding with the main gear so that's uh, that's all good uh, yeah all the gears are good we checked um i think we checked the uh, level of play on the uh, thrust uh, on the lay shaft before we dismantled the box the end float uh, and the establisher that was fine so we've got the still got the original thrust washers that go either end of the lay shaft but obviously when we assemble the gearbox we'll double check the uh, the end float um so we've got the main the high gear and this has got two needle roller bearings inside it and they're both absolutely fine and they're a complete pain to uh, <coughs> replace so we'll leave them as be <coughs> excuse me and then there's uh, the old oil seal and the new oil seal that goes in the end We'll be putting the new oils in in a minute. That's all okay. <clears throat> We've checked the cam wheel. I've had problems with cam wheels. Uh, excessive wear on the edge. This one seems okay. Obviously, the main place to tend to look is the um, sort of first, second gear. Uh, neutral, where things tend to wear, but it all looks fine to me. And also the grooves, where the uh, selector forks uh, operate from they look fine and the teeth on the uh, cam plate all look fine so that looks all okay and it's flat it's not warped at all main shaft <coughs> all looks okay however strangely i found a couple of damaged threads focus please focus please i wonder where the focus there we go no there we go there there's a couple of damaged threads there. Look, yeah, I've got it now. Uh, I think that won't affect us. Um, I think about how on earth that's happened, I don't know. Because this is sort of like hardened steel, but I think someone's had a, a right go at that with something. But I think we'll be fine. That's the, um, I don't, you know, I think the nut that goes on the end will actually, um, won't actually go on that far. But it'll be lock tighted and it'll be <clears throat> and it'll have a uh, lock tab on it so i think we're fine uh then i've expected inspected the actual selector forks for wear and these two look okay but this one is showing definite signs of of wear which is strange because this is the fourth and fifth gear or the fourth gear yeah fifth gear selector which you would expect to have the least amount of use um but i'm not sure uh no i'm just sorry i'm thinking why there was that wear on it and, and, and unless it wears with the bike running you know even without changing gear just with the gear spinning it might you know they might rub on it anyway i've ordered a new uh selector fork because i think that play uh, that wear is just too uh too excessive we'll compare it with the new one when that arrives but it seems to be worn on both sides. Uh, so apart from that, everything, uh, we've got the circlip here for the lay shaft. Everything's uh, okay and, and ready and all okay to, to be assembled. So, uh, but I'll fit that to oil seal in the end there. Don't forget open side towards the oil. So in this case, the open side will be inwards because that's the, this end is the inside of the gearbox. And this end goes towards the primary chain goes okay so that'll be the, the open face will be inwards in this case 
Okay, so uh, we'll wait for this uh, new selector to arrive and then we'll be assembling the gearbox. So, just heating up the uh, inner gearbox uh, casing in the oven, uh, which is fine because it's all been uh, vapor blasted and that, so it's not all horrible and oily and smelly. So, uh, uh, I'm not uh, I'm not worried about uh, making myself unpopular in the kitchen. Okay, I'm probably going to do it up to 180. I think basically the <laughs> because that's what you do everything at, isn't it? 180. Um, basically, I think the hotter you get it, the better. Uh, so, uh, and it's best if you can do things in the oven. It is best than using a blowtorch or whatever. Better for the metal and uh, and the whole thing works better. So, uh, what we'll be doing when we uh, get this out of the oven, we'll be putting in the outer lay shaft bearing. No, no, uh, the, yeah, the outer lay shaft needle roller bearing and the outer main shaft bearing. Okay, we've got the uh, casing out of the oven. Uh, we've got the uh, original uh, main shaft bearing, because I think that's fine. And we're going to insert it again. I'm going to put it uh, into any uh, writing outwards. Get the in there. Just make sure it's fully seated. There is a circuit that goes on the outside of it. And then we've got the outer lay shaft needle roller bearing. Which again, I've had in the freezer. Seems a bit stiff, but I think it'll be okay. So I'm just going to pop that in. And as with the inner bearing, oh, it just needs to protrude that little bit from the inside to hold the thrust washer on. There, yeah, perfect. So, yeah, with this one, basically, if it's flush on the outside, then you know it's the right distance on the inside. Yeah, that's great. So it, uh, the, uh, the thrust washer sits around the, the, the bearing, but doesn't protrude beyond it. Yeah. And uh, then we've just got a uh, big circuit to put around the uh, main shaft bearing. The things are a bit hot. Yeah, that could be, uh, could be interesting doing this one. I think I might have to leave it to the down. <laughs> I might have to leave it until the casing is uh, cooled down. We're in. Go check that one. 
Yeah, good. Yeah, we're all in. Good. Right, continuing uh, the uh, gearbox uh, preparation uh, before we actually assemble it. Uh, we need to put the uh, butterfly quadrant, I think it's fairly obvious why it's called a butterfly quadrant, uh, into the inner gearbox case. And uh, so that goes in there, and then there's this pin that goes across that holds it in place, and it's held in place with a couple of split pins. Okay, and there's one of the split pins goes through there, and through the corresponding hole in the pin okay um now one thing that i'm not sure about these but this happened before is this is the original pin that goes in to hold the butterfly quadrant obviously it's only got two grooves in and this is a replacement pin i bought now the thing about the replacement uh, pin with the extra groove is that you can put an oil seal in that extra groove whereas on this pin, the original pin, that groove is actually for where the second split pin goes through at the back here to hold the pin in place. So in other words, there's no oil seal on this pin. Um, so obviously it's a potential leak point. So I'm not sure when they upgraded to this extra, to this sort of three groove uh, pin, um, but I always do it for that reason so we get rid of the old pin we'll be putting that oil seal in this uh, last groove because that groove is for the split pin and that's just a groove that sticks out at the end not quite sure why there's a groove there and then that's the hole where the split pin the second split pin goes through the butterfly quadrant to hold it in place okay so i'll be uh, i'm going to be doing that now okay so that's the quadrant now in place held in place with a split pin there it can only go in one way around the quadrant because uh, if you get it the wrong way around the, the holes won't line up with the pin and that's the back uh, there with the uh, second uh, cut, uh, split pin in and there's that extra groove which uh, we don't really know why it's there oh, I suppose it helps you pull the pin out that's about it right so that's both the inner and outer casing now uh, prepped and so we can actually um, get on and start rebuilding the gearbox.